Whales are incredible. They're at the very top of the Southern Ocean food chain. But it's what's near the bottom that provides the strongest links, like the humble Antarctic krill. Without krill, there'd be no penguins, whales, or seals. Oh yeah, even their poop is precious. But krill swim in troubled waters, threatened by climate change and an ever-growing krill fishing industry. So the question is, do we have the will to save the tiny krill? And what if the answer is no? Here's a story about a krill called Alan who helped save his kind. Hey friends, just a quick interruption. Are you already subscribed? If not, please click the red button. It helps us grow and produce content like this. And now, back to the video. Look into the eyes of the Antarctic krill. Here lies the answer to the future of one of our most fragile and important ecosystems, the Southern Ocean. The Southern Ocean is larger than the combined areas of China and the US. It's the planet's primary absorber of heat and a significant carbon sink. But without Antarctic krill, this whole system would simply collapse. The Norwegian word krill means small fry or fish. Krill aren't actually fish. They're crustacea like prawns and shrimp. And they're not as small as you might think. Adults can grow up to six centimeters long. And they also glow. There are around 400 million tons of Antarctic krill, which is equivalent to the weight of all the human beings on the planet. It's estimated that half the Antarctic krill population disappears each year into the mouths of wild predators. Krill also provide a secret service to the planet with their poop. Hundreds of trillions of krill produce a lot of poop. These tiny threads fertilize the ocean and influence the global climate in a continuous cycle. Krill poop provides precious iron to microscopic phytoplankton, which is krill's major food source. Phytoplankton removes CO2 from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. When the krill eat phytoplankton, they also consume this carbon and then poop it out. And these threads of poop sink rapidly. From krill bottom to ocean bottom, around 12 billion tons of carbon are transported each year to a depth where they'll be safely locked away for centuries. Still, not much is known about krill. Serious research only began in the 1970s when fishing nations eventually turned their attention to the giant swarms. By then, the big krill-eating whales had been hunted almost to extinction. Without whales, there was, theoretically, a surplus of Antarctic krill. Before industrial whaling began, around 430 million tons of Antarctic krill had been eaten each year by baleen whales. This wasted whale food was then touted as a major source of protein for humans. It was a dream that turned out to be commercially unviable because of the high costs of processing and preserving. But the Soviet Union was desperate to reduce its reliance on grain imports from the West and dispatched large fishing vessels to Antarctica. Japan also harvested Antarctic krill, but to a much lesser extent. 528,000 tons were landed in 1982, the highest catch ever recorded. While krill were being harvested in their trillions, scientists were discovering the crucial role that they play in the Antarctic food chain. Alarm bells rang. Could krill fishing be threatening the entire ecosystem? In response, the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, or CAMELAR, was established. One of its roles was to set krill catch limits based on scientific data. Data that's difficult to come by in the wild. And then along came a krill called Alan. Alan changed the way researchers viewed krill and helped regulate the fishing industry. In the early 80s, a krill scientist at the Australian Antarctic Division worked out how to keep individual krill in captivity for research. He named one of his subjects, Alan. Up until then, it was believed that Antarctic krill grew rapidly and died at about two years of age. Alan blew that theory out of the beaker by surviving longer than any other captive krill had so far. He was already two or three years old when he was taken from the Southern Ocean, and he went on to live in the lab for a further nine years, 
until one day, while his jar was being cleaned, Alan escaped down the plug hole. But the implications of his longevity had already been profound. It was clear that the vast krill population in the Southern Ocean was the product of many years, not just a few. Here was proof that krill fishing might be unsustainable. Alan's sacrifice provided the scientific data that led to a far more precautionary approach to krill harvesting. He may have saved the lives of millions of his kind. Knowing just how many there are is now more important than ever, because the krill fishing industry is rapidly expanding again. There are new players, bigger ships, and advanced technologies on the horizon. Krill are cooked, dried, and pulverized to feed farmed fish, aquarium fish, pets, and livestock, and are even used as fish bait. Krill meal also enhances the color in some aquaculture species. I mean, why do you think premium farmed salmon is so pink? But the real growth of the industry is being driven by our demand for one expensive health food supplement, krill oil, which has become an incredibly popular antioxidant, rich in omega-3 fatty acids, important for heart, brain, eye, joint, and skin health. And it's said to be superior to other omega-3 sources like fish oil, but without the fishy aftertaste. The global krill oil industry is expected to be worth 2.25 billion US dollars by 2030. So Camelar set a krill catch limit for the four main fishing regions around Antarctica at 620,000 tons. That's approximately 1% of the local krill biomass. And this kind of fishing was considered sustainable until now. Scientists say that unless there is constant vigilance, things could go terribly wrong. Because alongside the expanding krill fishing industry, there's another, more ubiquitous threat, global climate change. One effect of rising CO2 levels is of particular concern for krill. When CO2 is dissolved in the ocean, a chemical reaction takes place that results in a rise in acidity. Experiments at the world's only research krill aquarium in Tasmania show that krill can adapt to small CO2 increases, but large increases will kill their embryos. If global CO2 emissions aren't curtailed, the entire krill population of the Southern Ocean could collapse by the end of this century, a disaster for the Antarctic ecosystem. Research remains key to future decisions, but scientific expeditions to Antarctica are becoming harder to mount because of the world's financial situation. There are large ships in Antarctica year-round that could provide the perfect platform for scientific research. And actually, they do. They belong to the krill fishing fleet. The fleet provides ship time and coordinates with research vessels and scientists to conduct krill surveys on various scales. It also collects data on fluctuating krill densities from year to year. All of this contributes to krill fishery management. So, can we have our krill oil and save the Antarctic ecosystem too? Will Antarctic krill be able to adapt to the rapidly changing southern ocean environment? Do we care? It's hard to relate to a small shrimp-like animal, but looking into the eyes of the humble krill and being aware of an entire ecosystem that depends on krill like Alan and his trillions upon trillions of relatives, we should at least try. Thanks for watching. Alan was really a cool krill. If you want to see more videos like this, check out our channel and hit the alert button so you won't miss any future uploads.